What's happening, y'all? Welcome inside the Fantasy Stock Exchange. Tyler and Bush coming at you with the Sunday special, Black Monday, where we talk about our fantasy lineups, why we shouldn't even try anymore to pretend that we know anything about football, all the, all the good stuff, some of the stuff that we expected to happen, Rip Dan Quinn, all that, all the uh, good stuff of Sunday football. Kind of a boring Sunday, in my opinion, in terms of like the slate of games. To be honest, I, I just was like, there was not a lot of intriguing games on. Um, but yeah, Tyler, how are you doing? I had the best Sunday that I've had in a while. Like what a day, like I, I, it couldn't have gone better. I mean, my, my team won by like, you know, a million points. Like what a day for me. Uh, I don't get to celebrate this much, uh, this often, you know, this isn't a thing that I get to pat myself on the back for. Wow. Dolphins fan. Congratulations. You won a game. No, don't, don't, don't throw that at me. I don't need that. I don't need that heat. I felt great today. Today was a great day. Uh, as what the Anthony guy from draft a once said, we had a great day. That's how I feel right now. <laughs> I can feel that. Uh, as always guys, if you enjoy this video at any point, hit the button that looks like this comment, any of your thoughts down below, subscribe to the channel. If you are new and hit the bell icon. So you're notified anytime we go live, anytime we post videos coming at you with great quality content all the time. So we're going to hit the intro and then we'll get into the first game. All right, so as I teased it at the beginning, rip Dan Quinn. Dan Quinn is gone. He got fired already. So it's uh, the end of week five. The Falcons are 0-5, and, and Dan Quinn no longer has a job. Uh, Carolina Panthers 23, Atlanta Falcons 16. Um, a lot of – this game actually went – other than the, like, the fact that I thought it was going to be a bit more high scoring than this, a lot of things happened that I kind of expected to happen. Mike Davis continues to look like – not just a top 10 fantasy running back. Like he actually looks like a top 10 NFL running back right now. Not only that, but Teddy Bridgewater had a great uh, outing in this one. He was one of the best streamers out there on the week. Robbie Anderson continues to look like the number one receiver in this offense, 13 targets, eight receptions, 112 yards. Uh, DJ Moore gets back on track, even though he had low volume, I would say. So five targets, four receptions, 93 yards and a touchdown. As I mentioned, Mike Davis, 10 targets. Like he, he's just ridiculous completely. Uh, out of this world yeah so on the Panthers side of things pretty much exactly what I expected yeah um I mean I I, I think the I think the Panthers are decent I, I I know that's like wow Tyler that's groundbreaking evidence there way, way to way to go I mean it took them going three and two for you to see that I think this team's not that bad um I think they've had a few good games that they were just kind of in good script for um but the team looks good. It doesn't look like they miss McCaffrey. It looks like when McCaffrey comes back, the team's just going to get stronger, which is definitely how losing a running back should feel for a team. Um, on the on the other side of things, go Falcons, baby. Todd Gurley's great effort uh, yeah, meant nada, nothing at all. Uh, this is probably his best game. There was rumors coming into the game where he was like, yeah, like um, he was talking to the defensive players, talking to the offensive players about, guys, we need to step up. We got to save Dan Quinn's job. And he did a lot the team sucks they're so bad Matt Ryan hurt my feelings this week um yeah what a what a day for the Falcons <laughs> congratulations though you lost your coach I know you all wanted that yeah so as you mentioned Todd Gurley actually like not only did he actually have a good game in this one he looked pretty decent in it I will admit that 14 carries 121 yards 8.6 a, a tote of the rock touchdown on the ground he had five targets four receptions 29 yards I mean, to me, this is a sell high opportunity. I would, I would probably sell him off this game if I could, because maybe some people buy into the fact that, oh, Todd Gurley's back. Like he's the, he's the Todd Gurley from LA. Like they, they, there's probably guys in your league that are buying into something like that. So if you can sell him, I probably would. But uh, this was a cake matchup. He should have smashed in this one. It, like the Panthers run defense is absolutely nothing to be scared of. Um, Julio Jones was out for this game. We'll have to monitor the kind of health of him. I'm guessing it's just like a, uh, maybe one, two week absence, but you never know with, he is an older player now. And the fact that he re-aggravated a hamstring injury against the Packers is probably not a good thing, but Calvin Ridley did pretty much exactly what we expect of him in Julio's absence, 10 targets, eight receptions, 136 yards. The only surprising thing is the fact that he didn't score a touchdown. Um, yeah. <laughs> Dan, shout out to Danny for telling everyone to start Zacchaeus who had fucking one reception for 13 yards. Definitely big time L there. Russell Gage. I, I told a couple people to start though. So I I'll take the L on that one. Fine. <laughs> Yeah, we'll, we'll, uh, play, 
what I don't need is these people pounding the table saying that Matt Ryan's only good when Julio's there, which I don't think is true. I mean, you still have other weapons. Um, just a bad game. I, I think it's just a bad performance by him. I mean, he only had two sacks, but it's not like <sighs> this game just sucked. Like this was this was a game we we're expecting to see like a fifty nine to seventy. Oh, I, want, I took the over in this game, and I'm very disappointed that it did not hit. Uh, the last thing before we get off this game. Man, Hayden Hurst is like a very, very like sh- like he's a st- like full on streamer. You can, like he's not an every week starter. If he's your only tight end, you need another tight end because he he's not really reliable at all. Like this Falcons passing offense isn't nearly as good as we expected, I would say. And the fact that Julio Jones has been out slash banged up the all these games and Hayden Hurst hasn't really done anything is is very very concerning. If you drafted him in like the seventh eighth round. So I'd imagine like you, you're probably going to need to pick up another tight end and play the matchups between the two guys, or maybe outright, like if you're in a shallow league, maybe eight, 10 team league, I wouldn't actually blame anyone for dropping him to be honest. Yeah, that's fair. Um, yeah. And I, I think that's, that's the final takes from this game. I think Dan Quinn's fired. Congratulations. What do we take from that? Um, the Falcons are still going to be bad. Pass game's still going to be heavy. Just how it is. Dan Quinn being fired isn't going to change the fact that the team still sucks. I mean, it's not like the play calling was really like the biggest effect. More or less, just the team is just not does not have the personnel to be successful, um, especially on the defensive end and with all the injuries. It's like they've got to have the most injury prone defensive uh, defensive side like in the league. So that that's a nightmare. We can jump to the Raiders and Chiefs. Go Raiders, baby! The Raiders tore it up. I felt good about this game. Congratulations to them. That's a huge win for a team that's really going in the right direction. Yeah, I. Um... I, so me and Danny did a like an underdogs pick like on the on the live stream this morning. We're like, okay, who's an underdog that could uh, that could upset the the team today? And I was caught between two teams, and I actually picked the Bengals rip uh, to upset the Ravens. But the Raiders upside upsetting the Chiefs was actually my other pick that I was kind of caught between. So I mean, I was kind of half right. Uh, Danny picked the Vikings, which hasn't actually happened yet. So as we're recording this, so I mean, yeah, but the Raiders forty points. Derek Carr has low key been very good. Like this whole season. He, yeah. Yeah. No, I have him in a league. I feel great about it. Like um, I have him in an 18 man league. Yeah. Don't at me. Um, 18 man writers league with all my writers from my, uh, my website. And yeah, no, he, he's been very, very good. Um, I have him and Ryan Fitzmagic on a rotation. Uh, started car today. I could have started either one of them. The cars just look good. He's just look consistent. He's look comfortable. Uh, when Jacobs is doing really well, he tends to do really well. So I like that combo. Um, he somehow still puts up some stats too. When Jacobs isn't there, it's obviously not as great, but when that offense is rolling, this team is really good. I, I you know, you're going to get a shootout against the chiefs. That's how you're going to have to play it. Um, but I see that this team can be successful in both the shootout format. We saw it with the Panthers, uh, earlier in the season. And they could also be successful when it comes to, comes to just grinding out games um, I, I kind of really like the Raiders. I mean, I, I don't, I'm not going to jump on the bandwagon. I have the dolphins. We're fine. We're going to the super bowl, but the Raiders are a good team. And when everything's cooking on their offense, they look really efficient. And I love what I was seeing today. Yeah. And speaking of efficiency, Henry Ruggs, three targets, two receptions, 118 yards and a touchdown. I mean, Henry Ruggs is good at football. As I've often said, Randy uh, two receptions yeah. over a hundred <laughs> pretty much. Yeah. So if Ruggs is out there on your waiver wire, and I'm pretty sure he is like, he's out there probably in about 50% of leagues. I would go grab him. I, I am I'm not saying like chase a, th- uh, a three target performance for Henry Ruggs, but generally speaking, he was coming off of an injury and he still managed to like get on the field and, and make some big plays. So I'd imagine as this offense kind of continues to gel and stuff, like Carr has been good and he's, he's able to support Ruggs if he's going to kind of emerge as the top receiver option on the team. Because, I mean, Darren Waller had a pretty solid game, seven targets, five receptions, 48 yards. But Darren Waller can't do everything in the passing game. They're going to need some pass-catching options. And Henry Ruggs is a perfect complement to what Darren Waller does, which is Ruggs can stretch the field horizontally and vertically. Waller is able to work the middle of the field. It's a perfect combo, especially when you have a threat in the backfield like Jacobs. It's, it's a nice little offense if they have those guys playing at a high level. And, and I think what has to be touched on is uh, people may be concerned that Devin Booker or maybe you, you're hunting him down for seven – uh, for 62, he had a really big run on the back end of the game. Um, at one point, this game was trying to be put on ice for the Raiders, and they kind of had to step back in and start playing serious again. So do keep that in mind. 
because uh, again, at one point the Raiders kind of had this like going away, um, but the Chiefs do what the Chiefs do, and they're going to play in every single game they're in, no matter how much they're down by. Um, so that's why Devin Booker is probably getting a little bit more touches in this one. So I wouldn't be too concerned on that. Um, on the Chiefs end and rushing the ball, Clyde edwards hilarious is an elite rusher. Oh my gosh! No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Oh, well, okay. <laughs> Before you go and yell at me for that stupid take. I said he wasn't really all that great of a runner. He's great at receiving the ball. Fine. Take it and run with it. Whatever. He is a great runner, dude. Do you even watch him carry the ball? He makes people miss every time he touches the ball. The blocking was not great. Mahomes personally didn't look great. He like Clyde Edwards Hilaire has eight, had eight targets in this game. And probably three of them were like uncatchable because Mahomes was just like chucking it at his feet and shit. And for what it's worth, Edwards Hilaire did have a receiving touchdown in this game negated by a Travis Kelsey penalty, which I mean, was not great. If you owned Clyde Edwards Hilaire and screamed at your television like I did because I own him. Um, I, am I worried about CEH? No, I'm not worried about CEH because he's getting between 16 and 20 touches every single time he's on the field and he plays for the best offense in the NFL. So he's still a top 12 running back for me. If you can go get him for for some other, like for Miles Sanders or something or Josh Jacobs, I would I would prefer Clyde Edwards Hilaire over those guys. Go get Sanders. Go get Jacobs, baby. Ride the trade. Miles Sanders, great day. I'm actually excited to dive into that game, but we're not there yet. As far as the receiving work, Travis Kelsey. Hi, how are you? Uh, what a day. I, I was almost thinking that tight ends just didn't exist this year, and we're just going to have to run away from them, but there's been one tight end that has existed and said, whoa, 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 settle down, Tyler. We're not pulling the tight end position yet. I think next year, every every year there's a trend. There may be a pulling of tight ends, and we just say we just keep them as a flex spot because – Every other tight end in the league has been incredibly inconsistent and miserable. And then there's Travis Kelsey, like putting up like elite wide receiver numbers. Like, so, you know, he's a yeah. bad. as far as the, the chiefs receiving goes, like, again, it's a, it's a gamble, whoever you want to start other than Tyree kill. If you want to start McCall Hardman, more power to you. I'm not, I don't have the physical strength to do that. Same goes for Sammy Watkins. You, you might get a big play. You might get a touchdown. That's the, the way the Chiefs offense works, but they're always going to be inconsistent. It's just kind of how it works. If you're not Tyree Kill, CEH, or Travis Kelsey in this offense, then you're probably not going to have consistent production. But as you mentioned, and also Mahomes in this game, like for what it's worth, like just really didn't look that good. I don't really know what the, the case is with that. He's, he's probably fine. He's not injured or bad or anything, obviously, but. I think the um, Raiders just came to play. I mean. Yeah, like he just, he just didn't, didn't have the greatest game. He had an 83.5 quarterback rating, which was, yeah, he was thoroughly outplayed by Derek Carr in this game, in my opinion. So. On to the next game. Uh, not a lot of great quarterback play in this one. Uh, what? Dude, Joe Flacco, baby, going all the way. Yeah, so Cardinals 30, Jets 10, and the lock of the century was Cardinals minus seven. I hope you took it because I did. No, uh, I, you know, I don't bet, but, yeah, I would have. So Kyler Murray, um, 380 yards passing, a touchdown and an interception, also did some work on the ground as usual, had a rushing touchdown, 31 yards. Um I think probably the biggest story from this one is the fact that Kenyon Drake actually had a half decent fantasy day for once. I mean, he still sucks in my opinion. If you can sell him off this performance, I would, because I mean, he averaged 3.3 yards per carry. He had one target for two yards and he just saved his day with a rushing touchdown. So again, if, if someone's willing to take Kenyon Drake off of you for someone like David Montgomery or Antonio Gibson or something like that, I would absolutely sell Kenyon Drake for those guys. Antonio Gibson. That's a, that's yeah, a, I would. <laughs> All right. Well, I do have Kenyon Drake today on my live stream with Nick. Uh, I led the, uh, the big train for everyone, everyone hop on Kenyon Drake's going to help you win a game today. Um, and he did good. We'll say that would we'll draw the line of good. I mean, um, he had 12 points. So, well, he had 15 in, in my league, at least. How so? eh, Anyways, we'll fight over it. I have now reached a conclusion that if you're going to play Kenyon Drake, you should play Edmonds too. I did that in a league and it helped me a lot. I have Edmonds and Drake both playing in that league and I feel great about it. Uh, just kidding. I'm dying every day. Kenyon Drake, you're getting there, buddy. You really are. Uh, your 18 touches was fantastic. Your 60 yards wasn't. The Jets are a miserable team and you should have blown them out. Uh, we need to have a... Have, that's now three straight weeks that Kenyon Drake has not gotten it done on the ground because he should have ran for a field day against the Lions and he should have ran for a field day against the Panthers. We just saw Todd freaking Gurley run for a field day against the Panthers. Kenyon Drake, it, he must have just had fresh legs or something at the back of last season. That's why he was good because he's clearly not the guy that, that I, that, well, I'm not really me, but like a lot of people thought he could be 
everything was on his side. Great offense, great like analytics, like all that kind of stuff was on his side, except for the, the sheer fact that this dude has never carried a full workload, even in college. So that, I mean, like that's, it kind of stood the test of time in terms of receiving Deandre Hopkins is freaking incredible, obviously. Right. Uh, Christian Kirk. I am again, I'm probably not chasing the Cardinals, any tertiary receivers on the Cardinals. I think it's just the Deandre Hopkins show. Um, and then as you mentioned, um, the only other piece that intrigues me on the Cardinals is chase Edmonds. If you don't already own him, I do think he's worth uh, trading for or whatever. Cause if anything does happen to Kenyon Drake, chase Edmonds is more than capable of, of carrying a workload. Not only that, but the guy's just super efficient when he does get touches. So he actually is probably flexible on a week over week basis. You yeah. saw in this game, he had eight touches and he turned it into nearly a hundred yards and a touchdown. Like the guy is just completely electric averaging like 11 yards per carry and stuff. Like he's, he's in great. Yeah. He's insane. Yeah. Um, on the jet side of things like, ugh. Bill Flacco is trash. Le'Veon Bell did exactly what I thought Le'Veon Bell would do, to be honest. 13 carries for 60 yards. Exactly what I thought. And then uh, Jamison Crowder is, is still the only actual viable fantasy piece on this offense. And I'm ready to stop talking about this game after that point. Great. Uh, DeAndre Hopkins, hop on the train. Uh, I've driven it all off season. Everyone's saying, oh, yeah, no, he won't perform with a new quarterback. Everyone can go fall off a cliff because I was loving him. Uh, and yeah, no, the Jets are the worst team in football. Congratulations. Um, here's the one thing I will say, because I think it does need to be put out in space. Um, the only team Trevor Lawrence can't help is the Jets. I think every other team he goes to, he will benefit and he will get wins with. If he goes to the Jets, he will not. Yeah. Like I, I honestly, like if you're a Jets fan, like one, I'm sorry for your loss Two, Two find a new team. Yeah, like actually find a new team. Like I would not blame anyone for jumping ship on the Jets. Like it, it's actually the worst organization in the in sports that I can think of. Like I don't watch baseball. I know there's some pretty bad baseball franchises out there, but uh, I, yeah. I from the organizations I know in sports, the Jets are the worst organization that I know of. Yeah, I, I mean it, they're comparable to Pittsburgh um, Pirates. Pirates yeah, in, see, in that's the team I was referring to, but I don't really watch baseball. Yeah, they're they, that's something that's that's a tire fire in itself. Um, the Marlins before Jeter got there, and honestly, that was a mess. Washington's uh, pretty bad too. Like no, this is a football team. This is a bad team. I mean, it's I feel I I don't feel for you actually because go Dolphins, and I hate you. You guys are like my least favorite team in the league. But like, please jump off ship if you can come to us. Like, we'll we'll take you. We love losers. Um, we wouldn't mind Jets fans at all. Uh, the weather's a lot warmer down here. Um, the team's a lot less pathetic. Sam Darnold's a joke. Adam Gase will be fired, and Bill O'Brien will be hired, and you'll be kicking yourself um, because welcome to hell. Uh, that's what life is as a New York Jets fan. If if Bill O'Brien gets hired by the Jets, you you need to jump ship. Like you have to. Like if you are a Jets fan. Anyway, let's stop talking with the Jets. I never want to talk about the Jets. <laughs> yeah. So Pittsburgh Steelers, thirty-eight twenty-nine over the Philadelphia Eagles. I mean, I think we have to start at probably the highest waiver wire pickup of the week if he's available in your league. And that is one uh, wide receiver from the university of Notre Dame, Chase Claypool, 11 targets, seven receptions, 110 yards, three receiving touchdowns on the ground, added a rushing touchdown as well as six yards. This dude went off. Wait, wait, you, that's your number one, not Travis Fulcrum, baby. No, I don't care. I don't care about any reject Philadelphia Eagles receiver. Anyway, <laughs> Chase Claypool 100% is worth 40% of your fab, in my opinion. Why? Because Deontay Johnson left this game with an injury. And I already, I've already said this in the past. I said, if Chase Claypool is not owned in your league, he needs to be one of the, he's got to be one of the best stashes in fantasy football. And I said, one, because if anything happens to Deontay Johnson or Juju Smith-Schuster, he is going to vault to the top of the waiver wire speed dial because this dude is good. This dude is explosive. He's like, he, he actually legitimately looks like I don't want to say prime Martavis Bryant because I think he's more talented than that, but like he kind of reminds me of that role. Maybe it's just because he's playing for the Steelers, but he the, the dude's like a downfield threat and he absolutely took over this game. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, I mean, I was going to talk about Ray Ray McLeod because he was beautiful in this game. Um, <laughs> the running game does not work. Um, I, you know what? I was expecting no running back to do well in this game. I thought James Conner would struggle because the Eagles just stopped the run. And I thought homeboy Miles Sanders would not really do all that great. And Miles Sanders gets two touchdowns laughing on my bench. So you know what? Here's a middle finger to you that I'm not going to show because you two will pull the video. Um, 11 attempts for Sanders. Team was kind of chasing from behind most of the time. 
Uh, 15 for Connor, ineffective on both ends. Um, I would say Miles Sanders actually had a pretty decent game against the Steelers. Kind of changed my mind on, okay, maybe elite running backs can maybe do something against this team. Um, but sticking on the Steelers side, the number two option, uh, with Slay kind of locking down Juju, Ebron showed up as well, uh, which I like to see. Um, six targets, that's, that's really what I look at. For tight ends, if you're getting targets, you're you're going to, you're going to jump up again. We've been saying how, how many, how many issues there are with tight ends struggling this year. So uh, Ebron's kind of a low key guy. If you, if you need someone in the league, he's, he's getting volume. So it's working. And again, with uh, Deontay going down, wouldn't mind um, an Ebron share. And then on the other side, uh, the Eagles. Yeah. Fulgram. Hello. You're, you're pretty good too. Uh, our single wide side. Don't buy into it. Please don't. Um, don't do it. Yeah. Uh, Travis Fulgham. Here's what I think of him. Yeah. You could probably pick him up on your waiver wire, but he's probably going to be go for way too much for like, I I'm if, if, if Travis Fulgham this time next week has another great game, I'll tell you I was wrong. But to me, this is a flash in the pan. The guy you want to own in this offense, if you're going to pick any receiver is Greg Ward. Uh, I don't want Travis Fulgham. I don't want Richard Rogers. I don't want John Hightower. I don't want JJ Ortega Whiteside. You don't I, want Ertz. I don't want Ertz either. I do not want Ertz. It Six hurts. targets, uh, one reception, six yards. Uh, I'm mean, not not great. Yeah. Now, and, and what what sucks is I even wrote a piece saying that Zach Ertz was going to bust this year, and I found him in a league where his volume his his draft capital was crashing so bad. I'm like, I have to do it. <laughs> and it's been miserable. So don't, don't not listen to yourself. You're, you're, your smartest person. Um, take that uh, as you will, but yeah, no, Zach Ertz has been miserable. Carson Wentz has been miserable. Um, what a fantastic day. Sacked five times again. Lovely. Uh, Miles Sanders capitalizing off of some touchdowns. Yes, sir. Um this was kind of a really bad matchup for the Eagles and somehow they put up 29 points. So I guess congrats, but yeah, yeah you, know, you deserve to win this game. That's for sure. Yeah. My last takeaway from this game is, is Ben Roethlisberger is the top 12 quarterback he's been his entire career. Like you, you can roll Ben Roethlisberger out pretty much regardless of matchup, because as you can see his receiver core goes four deep. He has a solid tight end and a decent pass catching running back. Like that is the epitome of fantasy football. Ben Roethlisberger, does he look the greatest in, in real life? He had a pretty good game in this one, but does he have some lapses and throw some bad picks sometimes? Yeah, but Ben Roethlisberger has an explosive downfield receiver in Chase Claypool and James Washington. He has a great slot receiver in Juju Smith-Schuster, and he has a great separator in Deontay Johnson, assuming he's still healthy. So if Ben Roethlisberger is not in your lineup all the time, you must have another really good quarterback because he has pretty much been good ever since he's been on the field so far this year. So uh, we could get off this game onto the Rams and Washington. Yeah, uh, baby. Yeah, so... Uh, from a real life NFL perspective, the biggest story in this game is obviously the fact that Alex Smith was actually able to play um, after Kyle Allen left with, I believe he was being evaluated for a concussion at the time. Uh, yeah. Alex Smith gets in kind of not great uh, as far as him throwing the ball. He takes six sacks and uh, throws the ball 17 times for like 37 yards. Uh, so not great all around. Uh, the Rams kind of walloped the uh, Washington football team 30 to 10 in this one. As I mentioned, on the Washington side, Antonio Gibson gets his usual allotment of touches, his usual 15, 16 touches that he always gets. Obviously, much more explosive in the receiving game as he usually is, but the, that J.D. McKissick guy, man, he won't go away. So, I mean, Antonio Gibson, as far as I'm concerned, is still a top 28, 26 running back just because there's a lot of running backs going down. But – uh, you got to play him based on matchups. This was not a good matchup too. So I kind of expected him to have a down game in this one, but uh, I'm oh. you, you're shaking your head. I, I still believe in Gibson because I believe in the talent. I believe in his, his opportunity. He's still getting 15, 16 opportunities a game. I, I think he, I think he'll be just fine. This was a bad matchup in my opinion. I watched a touch too much of this game. Um, yeah. No, Alex Smith was only going to McKissick. He was like the, the only person the ball was actually connecting to in the hands of uh, another receiver for this team. Gibson is kind of game script dependent as much as he is good on third down and, and in the receiving game, they trust McKissick in that role more. So because they were getting absolutely slaughtered in this game, they had McKissick in. I'm, I'd be interested to see the snap counts. I'm guessing it was like 50% McKissick and like 30% Gibson. Like he probably out snapped him pretty significantly. We can't expect that to change. This isn't a good team. So it's like, I, I mean, he's just going to be a pass. It's just what it is. Um, I mean, I, I want to take away that. I do want to, you know, 
keep people off the ledge. If you started Terry McLaurin, don't, don't like be mad at yourself, but kind of be mad at yourself. I mean, he's your only target. If, if a team is smart and they have an elite corner in Ramsey and you have one receiving option in your offense, they're going to cover that one receiving option and that'll be it. Like that's the game for you. You should have expected him. I told a lot of people to sit a very mediocre to play very mediocre options over McLaurin. It's just what it was. Um, yeah, no, if, if Alex Smith continues just to get hammered like this, I think the biggest news was about an hour before game time, maybe about an hour and a half before game time. There was just a report leak that Dwayne Haskins is, is likely to be traded. And I was like, okay, well. Actually trading what? for him was my question. I'm like, who? okay, yeah, number one, who's trading for him? Number two, is this team, like, accepted? Like, we were like, okay, they're putting in Kyle Allen because they think they can win but are they like, like I don't think they are I think like Kyle I Allen starts the rest of the season but I think they're okay with losing like this like, isn't a good team. like this is like a weird quarterback situation I have no idea if they're going to start Alex Smith or, or Kyle Allen but I, I'd imagine they would go with Alex Smith but I have no idea to be honest or uh, they, with Kyle Allen but I have no idea if there was a team that needed Justin Fields I think the perfect fit is Washington they because he, he's otherwise they need a guy that's can that can run away uh, and yeah, Trevor Lawrence can, but like get a guy that can run away and, and make plays with his legs. That's what this team needs and more dynamic pieces. On the other end, we, we talked a lot about Washington. That was the first yeah, time ever. Uh, yeah, on the, on the other hand, uh, Robert Woods, big play. Yeah, big play Woods, you love to see it. Um, him and Cooper Cup are just, they're nice. And then Jared Everett participated today. That, that Good for him. Uh, congratulations for showing up, Jared Albert, Everett. Yeah, um, I think obviously the biggest story in this one from the Ram side of things is, I mean, Cam Akers looked good, but he only had nine carries. Daryl Henderson had 15 and a touchdown and Malcolm Brown still had eight carries. And I'm going to continue to echo the sentiment that I've had this whole time is that no running back will ever be a feature back in this offense. It will always be a committee. As long as, as long as those, those guys are healthy, like all there needs to be is two of them. If Malcolm Brown and Daryl Henderson are both healthy, it's going to be a split. If Daryl Henderson and Cam Akers are both healthy, it's going to be a split. If Cam Akers and Malcolm Brown are both healthy, it's going to be a split. It does not matter. Sean McVay does not care about our fantasy teams. He is going to use whatever running back he sees fit. Cam Akers 100% looked like the best running back in this game, but I can't expect them to just go, oh yeah, Cam Akers, here's all the volume. Here's all the workload because they, they just have said everything but that this whole season. Yeah, no, what, what will probably end up happening is, is next year we may see a split, uh, a difference. Um, maybe one guy kind of disappears. Maybe it's just two of them, or maybe one guy takes it all, but it, it won't happen this year at all. Um, and yeah, you you had been advocating and, and preaching that this was what was going to happen. And I was just, you know, what? I'm like, yeah, I mean, it makes sense. So I'll, I'll give you the credit for that one. Uh, you called it. We spent a lot of time on the Rams-Washington game. Can we talk about how rough the weather situation was in the Bengals situation in the Bengals game that like, eh, I can't really say it's the fault of it, but Bengals Ravens, um, it looked like one team showed up. I mean, the Bengals looked terrible, but like, I don't know. Cause I was saying you should probably not play Bengals players because the end of this depression that was going across, that's the hurricane that started at Louisiana and crossed the whole Southern United States hit this game and it was just a bunch of really, really bad weather. So I, I doubt Joe Burrow was used to that uh, playing in Ohio. You probably don't see a bunch of rain. And then when he went down to LSU, I mean, he wasn't really playing in a bunch of rough games weather-wise. I mean, I don't know what I want to chalk this up to, but like, it was just, I didn't think it was a good game. No, I, you, you, if you watched red zone, you didn't see a lot of this game because there was a lot of offense early from Baltimore. But after that, it was like just kind of a slug fest back and forth. Just a lot of sloppy play by Joe Burrow, a lot of sloppy play by the the Bengals in general, even by the Ravens. Like Lamar Jackson didn't have the greatest game in this one. He had freaking 19 or 37 attempts, 19 completions, 180 yards, two touchdowns, and a pretty bad pick that he threw as well, where the the announcer actually was like, Oh, and it's complete. I'm like, that's not the right team, dude. Anyway, um, again, uh Ravens backfield, complete mess. Don't even want to talk about it. Uh just you can't start these guys, you like unless you enjoy headaches. Uh, Marquise Brown is definitely the biggest takeaway from this game. The fact that he finally got into the end zone, he had 10 targets in this one. He's, I mean, he's basically where I always thought he was. He was kind of just a borderline wide receiver two, kind of every single week. He's a guy you're probably going to be asking us, do I start Marquise Brown? Do I start Marquise Brown? But 
more often than not, I'm going to say, yeah, because Marquise Brown's a good player. He's in a good offense and he, he's an explosive guy who can return value on the week in one single play. I would say there's three guys in this offense. You can consistently start now. Um, Mark Andrews and Lamar, obviously, and now Hollywood. Um, the rest, please don't ask me. You're going to get a really, really sarcastic and snarky answer. I'm sorry. It's just what's going to happen. Do not ask me which running back to start. I'm going to tell you that you should start none of them because that's the correct answer. And no, there is not a second wide receiver option um, unless you count Andrews. And there's not a third wide receiver option uh, in this offense. It's just those two. They're going to eat. And Lamar's going to do his thing as well. Um, hi, T. Higgins. You have consistently played really well. Welcome and, to the oh, – Also, big, big, big news. If you own T. Higgins, which I do in a couple leagues because I thought he was a great stash, A.J. Green left this uh, game with a hamstring injury. And knowing A.J. Green, he'll probably be out for a bit of time with that. And More to that. Higgins he just slides right into his role. He has to be traded on the sidelines. Like, he said he was done with this bad work. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm, there was something, there was a report, Bleacher Report sent me where they were saying that AJ Green was mouthing off on the sidelines. Like he was not happy um, and wanting to be traded because he didn't like losing and stuff like that. I mean, he may, he may be gone. Like it may be more than just an injury. Like, I mean, he may, he's contributing to the losing. So I don't know what the hell he's well, complaining about. Yeah, he's, he's miserable. I mean, send him to the Eagles though, and they'll lose more games. Who, who cares? Yeah. I mean, the Eagles could use a, a receiver like AJ Green, who's been a consistent bill of health all the time. Uh, yeah. So Tyler Boyd, to be honest, had a bit of a down game in this one. I thought he would do a lot better than he did. Uh, but I mean, he didn't kill you either. He had a, he had not kind of a pedestrian game, but as you mentioned, yeah, T Higgins is the biggest winner out of this game because AJ green is hurt or wants to be traded or whatever. Like T Higgins is the guy now, like this is T Higgins is the main alpha receiver on the outside. Tyler Boyd is probably still the target hog, but I think T Higgins is going to be a guy that you could flex probably week in and week out with the amount that this, Bengals team is going to throw the ball. He actually like Joe Burrow actually threw the ball the fewest he's thrown it. And then quickly on Joe Mixon, I'm not worried about him at all. He kind of salvaged his day in garbage time with some receptions and a couple carries and stuff, but the dude touched the ball 30 times. So I don't really care what his stat line was. If you touch the ball 30 times more often than not, you're going to be good. Raise your hand. If you thought Giovanni Bernard was going to be good because the weather was a mess. <laughs> Whoa, put your hand down. Uh, I, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a mess uh, more to being a mess. Um, Imagine getting rid of, rid of Bill O'Brien and actually winning football games. Like, yeah, what a concept. As a Dolphin fan, I'm kind of pissed because I wanted this team to lose out so we could have, like, the number one pick and, like, the number five pick. Like, that would have made me so happy. But it's fine. They won a game. They figured out how to play football. Gardner Minshew didn't. Um, that's unfortunate. I really thought the Jaguars would be a sneaky win this week. Like, I thought there would be too much turmoil uh, in, in Houston for them to win this week, and they showed up. So good for them. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And Deshaun Watson definitely came through for fantasy owners who traded for him before this game, i.e. me. Um, he had like 27 fantasy points, depending on the league you were in. He might have had over 30. Uh, definitely a great game from him. He, he started off a little shaky, but he definitely got things on track. David Johnson actually was pr relatively efficient on the ground. I think um, probably another big waiver wire ad this week because he was probably dropped last week because I believe he dropped a donut last week. Yep. Uh, Brandon Cooks, 12 targets, eight receptions, 161 and a touchdown. And Will Fuller also not too shabby himself. Uh, these two guys, I'm not, I don't want to say they're both startable all the time because like this offense is very inconsistent and it's, it's partially because of Deshaun Watson, it's partially because the offensive line sometimes doesn't show up to play. Like th these guys are risks like Cooks and Fuller, the risks, but you can't, they were, they are worth being rostered and they are startable and hopefully with Bill O'Brien now gone, whatever they're doing in, on offense changes for the better. And Deshaun Watson's able to stay more consistent and get these guys the ball. Here's the thing. I played him the past two weeks and I played him this week. I played him when he put up 5.3 two weeks ago and I played him when he put up zero. And then I played him this week because you know why? I don't like myself and I really like hurting myself. And you know what? He came back for me. So all these people on Twitter or all these people in the world, there's like no one even played Brandon Cooks after the past two weeks. I did. I did. And it hurt me to do it. And I didn't care because I wanted Brandon cooks to hurt me again. And he looked fantastic in this game. And I think he led the league in, in receiving this week uh, yards wise. What a King, what a God. I love you, Brandon cooks. Thank you for doing it for all your fantasy owners. You're an absolute beauty an absolute stud. Um, I don't know who to say cost the game for the Jags. Cause Minshew didn't look terrible, but like the run game didn't look good, but the run game only took 13 attempts. So I don't know. It was a weird game for Jacksonville on their end. I think Houston just outplayed them. 
Yeah, as you mentioned, a weird game for Jacksonville. James Robinson was expected to be a like a smash play in this one. A lot of people were like ranking him in their top 10 because Houston has just been absolutely decimated against the run the past couple weeks. Um, LaVisca Chenault is kind of getting his obligatory six, seven, eight targets a game. Yeah, that's he's flex worthy if he continues to get that kind of volume. DJ Chark left this one early uh, with a hamstring injury, I believe. And uh, that's not good. We saw what happened without uh, DJ Chark in the lineup against the Dolphins, uh, where the Jaguars offense looked like it, it wouldn't be a high school team. So hopefully DJ Chark is okay. Uh, he was dealing with a couple injuries, even going into this game with like a chest injury or whatever. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll have to monitor DJ Chark going forward. I'm not really worried about him. I know he didn't really get too involved in this game, but he is, he is kind of a boomer bust receiver by nature, being that he's like a downfield guy and a red zone guy. Um, yeah. Usually you need a big play or a touchdown from him to hit kind of value. But uh, yeah, th- there's not much else I want to take away from this game other than the fact that I hope this offense continues like the Houston offense continues to look rejuvenated without O'Brien. I think that's my biggest hope for them going forward. That's fair. Um, Texas took a big loss yesterday, but they took a big win today. Colin Johnson, welcome to the end zone. Welcome to relevancy. Yeah. Uh, not really a guy I'm hunting down. Uh, only four targets in this one, but good for him for getting a touchdown. Keelan Cole got a touchdown as well. So Anyone that had hope in maybe, I don't know, uh, James Robinson or LaVishka Chenault or Shark not getting hurt and actually catching a touchdown. Um, yeah, you didn't get that. I'm sorry. Uh, Houston actually showed up. What is this? What can we say moving forward? I don't know. I don't really think Houston's a legitimate threat, but I also thought that Houston would struggle early. So who knows? Um, it's an interesting situation to monitor. Jacksonville, you had a big fluke your first game. And you kind of look like what we all expect you to look like. It's big, tough for you guys. Yeah. And on to your, uh, your team, they absolutely romped the defending NFC champions and uh, the San Francisco 49ers, Miami Dolphins, 43, San Francisco, 17. As I've, as I've often said, you always bet the Miami Dolphins. More importantly, Ryan Fitzpatrick live, because you can tell on the first drive, whether it's going to be a Fitz magic or a Fitz tragic. And I took (laughs) I took the Dolphins money line immediately after that first drive. I'm like, all right, plus 225 Dolphins money line, free cash. It was indeed free cash. Uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick, 22 of 28, uh, 350 yards, three touchdowns, nearly a perfect quarterback rating for the bearded one. Uh, Miles Gaskin, 16 carries, 57 yards and a touchdown. Also added a uh, five target performance in the receiving game. I mean, this dude is, is continuing to prove that he's a, he's a RB2. Yeah, if you're a Dolphins fan and you don't follow me on Twitter, you probably need to get on that because I, I'm basically like a live game recap. Um, and today, my all my tweets consisted of, this is the greatest team I've ever seen. And I concur with it. This is the greatest team I've ever seen. They're greater than the 2,000-some-odd Patriots who were fraudulent. They didn't go undefeated. They're better than the 70 Dolphins who did go undefeated because it's the greatest team of all time. Um, Dolphins look fantastic. Like, I'm... I was so happy today and we're not going to do this next week. Like we just won't. We the consistency of this. What? Who do you play? I don't even know. It doesn't even matter. Well, we we're supposed to play the Broncos, but like. Oh next- yeah. Your, your shit got jumbled. Yeah. Well, new England, new England knows how to cheat everything else, but a COVID test. So it's, it's ridiculous. Um, yeah, no miles Gaskin. He was here. Good for him. I mean, if you get a touchdown on miles Gaskin, it was a good play for you. I mean, that that's, that's what I'm playing him for. Um, that touchdown upside. Uh, the receiving core looked beautiful. Uh, Mike Gusecki came to play. He was six uh, six targets, which was fantastic. He had 91 yards. Um, he was really eating an open field. He had a 70-yard play. Yes, sir. Uh, Preston Williams came to play. He put up 100 and a, and a tutty. Devontae Parker, only three targets, put up a tutty. I don't care. Miles Gaskin actually had some receiving work today, too. What a day to be alive for the Dolphins fans uh, in, in the room. If you're a San Francisco 49er fan, welcome back to mediocrity. Yeah. Um, so Jimmy Garoppolo has the lowest quarterback rating I've ever seen uh, in 15.7. He played the first half and was actually benched. I, they said that it was precautionary to protect him or something. They benched him. Get out of here. It's miserable. They, they benched him. He was bad. Like he looked bad in this game. Um, you know who did not look bad? is Raheem Mostert, who 11 carries, 90 yards, 8.2 a carry. Okay, we could say all we want about Jarek McKinnon being like this great receiving back and and uh, 
Kyle Shanahan loves him and all this stuff. Jarek McKinnon has never been a good runner and he wasn't a good runner these past couple of weeks that Mostert's been out. Mostert's the guy on the ground. Uh, and you saw that with McKinnon only getting one carry in this game. And if you started McKinnon, he definitely disappointed you. Four targets, two receptions, and five yards. Not ideal. Yeah, uh, I mean, you can run against the Dolphins. I think that, that's what, that was shown today. And if you're not an elite quarterback, it's going to be hard to pass against them. They have a really, really good secondary. It's just like, you're like, it's the Dolphins, though. I mean, you can you can do anything. You start all your players against them. Not necessarily. I, I think I think we can kind of we have to start respecting the receiving um, the, the res- defending of uh, the receivers for the Dolphins. I mean, they have really solid corners. The young ones are starting to actually come in. Bobby McCain had a pick today. Um, it's been like forever since he's actually like helped this team, and he really did today. Uh, Xavier Howard is an elite corner. I mean, there's he. I think he's top ten, an easy top ten. He may be top five in the league. I mean, Xavier Howard. I feel like he gets a pick every single week. Um, he's going to lock down your top options. So, yeah, no, the receiving core did not look great. Jimmy G just didn't look good at all. Um, I think there's way too much hype on him. I think this definitely cools it down. And I think the biggest takeaway is the Dolphins, when they're on, they're on. And they're a legit team. Like, I, I am very excited to be a Dolphins fan because I know what the future holds. The only thing that I do not like is my prediction of Tua coming in a lot sooner than I thought is probably not going to happen because you got to see – apparently – this is just how it's going to be. Ryan Fitzpatrick is going to have to die a couple games in a row for us to get to a, but you know, for a team being what two and three, I mean, we're good. I, I think, I think this team is a dark horse playoff playoff team. I mean, they looked really, really good today, but maybe, maybe I'm just like blowing myself or I'm out of proportion, but I don't know. You, you can justify that. Yeah, I, I think he definitely got some pieces in terms of like a real life NFL thing. And and maybe Tua, whenever he does get in, provides a huge spark to this team and he can elevate the play even further. Because I think Fitzpatrick is able to do that right now. Uh, when he's on, everyone kind of feels it and everyone oh, yeah. plays better. You saw like Preston Williams was struggling these past couple of weeks and he had a great game in this one. Uh, if he's on waiver wires, he I would 100% pick him up over Travis Fulgham or any of these other shitty Eagles receivers or something like that. I would definitely go get Preston Williams if you can. I'm not blowing a crazy amount of fab on him because he's probably going to be a little inconsistent and whatnot. But uh, yeah, we could uh, actually quickly on the Niners receiving. Um, I'm not worried about De- like Debo Samuel only had two receptions for 19 yards in this one, but he did have eight targets as did George Kittle. They were the two target leaders, which is exactly what I expect. And then Brandon Ayuk also like chips in as well. I mean, the quarterback play was just so bad in this game for the Niners that you can't really take away anything from the receiving core, in my opinion. Credit the Dolphins' corners. I think they they came to play. They were playing tight against uh, the receiving core. But, yeah, Jimmy G was miserable. Um, So it's kind of a mix of both. Yeah, but I'm going to take credit for the Dolphins' corners because they look good today. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. No, Igbenogany is not someone I expected to look good. But, anyway, so – Cleveland Browns, 32. Sorry, the 4-1 and Cleveland Browns, 32. The Indianapolis Colts, 23. Uh, I tweeted this out during this game, and it was based on this team. I said, there's five NFL teams right now that would be better if they had Jameis Winston as their starting quarterback. And the Indianapolis Colts are absolutely one of those teams because Phillip Rivers is so washed. Like I can't even, I can't even describe how washed Phillip Rivers is. If this team had a good quarterback, if they, if they could coax Andrew Luck out of retirement, this is a Super Bowl contending team because this defense is fierce. No, they're really good. And it's unfortunate that 32 points gets hung on them, but like you're going to be gassed when the team can't keep you on the field. Uh, you can't you can't just say, hey, rookie running back, go out there and, and, and do a bunch. I don't really think they've even put the full workload into him yet. Um, this team is better with, with Eason. And I don't think – and I said this. I didn't think Eason was ready. I thought Eason needed a whole year, and I was very high on Eason um, coming into the draft. I wanted him to go to a spot where he can learn. I thought he was a very good comp to Phillip Rivers, so I thought it was a great situation for him to go into. But I think he just got a chance at this point. This is not a good situation quarterback-wise. You are miserably bad, and you need to change something on the offensive end because, uh, I mean, you don't, you don't deserve the 23 points you put on the board. I mean, it was just – well, they didn't deserve it because I'm pretty sure. Um, well, well, we'll get to this in a second. But Baker turned the ball twice, uh, turned the ball over twice, and I believe yep. the, the Colts also scored a punt return. So their offense was not very involved in the twenty, uh, the twenty three points that they scored. I think it's more likely that they ride Philip Rivers, knowing that they have a chance to compete, knowing he's a veteran quarterback. And if that doesn't work out, they trade for a veteran quarterback, or they trade for fucking Dwayne Haskins or some bullshit like that. 
Oh, uh, at the oh. deadline or something because oh, no. I, I don't think Jacob Eason's very good personally. And I, I don't think if he is, if he does get in there, I think we'd be, they'd be, they would have talked him up more. I just, we haven't heard much about him. That's what makes me think he's not really kind of coming along quick enough. And I, I doubt they would be like, Oh, we're like a, a 500 football team, but we're going to put a fourth round rookie in. Like, I, I doubt they would do that. I think they're more likely to like trade for Jameis Winston or something like that. If they, if they felt they needed a quarterback upgrade. Um, yeah. In terms of receiving in this game, T.Y. Hilton actually had a pretty decent game, which is probably the first time all season that T.Y. Hilton's even remotely shown up for a Play game. This week, though. We dare you. Yeah. Oh, yeah, exactly. And tight end wise, I, I told uh, <laughs> me and Danny had a bet um, rest of season that both neither guy performed. But it is kind of funny that we had a bet uh, rest of season. And he was like, um, oh, Mo Ali Cox is having a breakout season. I'm like, dude, he's got one target, zero reception, zero yards in this game. Um, to be fair, I took Logan Thomas versus Mo Ali Cox, so neither of them looked really good this week. But I mean, Mo Ali Cox is droppable. Uh, it's a tight end by committee there with Burton and Doyle and, and Cox. It's not worth it. Yeah. So, um, I yeah. mean, I'll tell you the funnest. The funniest part about this game is I heard the the uh, officiate not the officiating the, the broadcasting crew say that Kareem Hunt was struggling today, um, which he was surprised about because he thought Kareem Hunt was going to go off. But I'm like, uh, the Colts are a good team. Um, it was something weird where he was saying like, it's so shocking that Kareem Hunt hasn't been able to do very much today. And I'm like, do you see the defense he's going up against? Like, this is surprising to you. Aren't you like supposed to be a professional at this? Um, but don't be concerned about him. That's my point there. Uh, I was jumping to the Browns. Yeah. Into the Browns side, Baker Mayfield, kind of a pedestrian game as I mean, as usual, to be honest, Baker's not really the reason that they're four and one. Let's be honest here. It's the defense and the run game that they're four and one. Um, uh, speaking of, uh, there goes Dalvin Cook into the end zone uh, yes, sir. As, as we're recording this. Uh, yeah, as you mentioned, Kareem Hunt gets the full workload. It's exactly what we thought. Kareem Hunt gets the full workload. He doesn't do a whole lot with it, obviously, because this is a tough matchup. DeForest Buckner might be one of the most underrated defensive players in the entire league because he pretty much has transformed that entire defense with his addition, along with guys like Xavier Rhodes and, and uh, the fourth round safety that they took. I can't remember his name. But uh, a lot of these pieces are just contributing to the fact that the Colts are not an easy matchup. And we kind of expected this uh, from these guys. Like, they weren't going to have a great game. But, I mean, Odell Beckham and Jarvis Landry had okay stat lines if he, if he chose to start them. Austin Hooper also had a pretty decent stat line in this game. I don't expect Baker Mayfield to throw the ball 37 times a game. If that does happen, then these guys will probably have solid stat lines. But um, the volume in this game seems to be a little bit of an anomaly, in my opinion. Yeah, I think what the uh, what's Fancy's trying to do, which I do commend, um, he's trying to have more fun with the offense. He's you know it, last week Landry had a touchdown. This week Odell's throwing the ball. Um, they're getting more guys involved. They're getting the three core guys that they're paying the most on that on that offense for receiving. Uh, they're getting them the ball and they're letting them do work. I think Stefanski's really good for this team. Um, now again, you mentioned it having Baker throw what thirty seven times. That's not really like the best for you. Um, yeah. You're going to want to be carried by your run game. If you're, if you're Cleveland, but when you do have to pass, I mean, keep it fun. I think that's what makes this team good. Um, if you are, are having fun with this offense that makes Odell and Jarvis have a lot better of a time, it puts less pressure on Baker. The run game can get going. I think Stefanski's really figured it out. Um, you had him as your coach of the year pick. Uh, I made a joke that I was going to have him and that I picked. Um, what is it? Uh, the Titans head coach gosh nice job Mike Vrabel um I don't blame you I think that was a really good pick because now it's really starting to pay off I don't I, I hate Cleveland mainly because I hate Baker but I think this team is pretty good yeah and I, I think the reason I picked Kevin Stefanski is because and you you agree with me on this take is if this team got anywhere it was because of Hunt and Chubb and oh, the thing for Hunt and Chubb was Stefanski being hired because yeah. the run game that he's like Dalvin Cook's playing well but Dalvin Cook actually played better last year with Kevin Stefanski calling the shots. True. Very like true. early in the season, obviously. And Madison, same goes for him. So I think Stefanski is just like an elite run, uh, run schemer. He's, he's just great at it. And it's, it's nothing but good things for the Cleveland Browns running game. Obviously, Baker is going to have the typical, like, uh, I would say on a weekly basis, you're hoping for like 28 attempts, like 220 yards, two touchdowns, no picks. If Baker can do that every week, they're going to win 10 games at least. Yeah. And uh, speaking of elite, elite running backs, Devontae Freeman is back, baby. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, gosh. Uh, yeah, I think seeing the Giants put up 34 points today, 
prove that, uh, yeah, Dallas's defense is probably the worst in the league. Yeah. And yeah, that's just brutal. So obviously the biggest story in this game is the fact that Dak Prescott will most certainly be out for the year based on the severity that the injury looked based on his reaction to the injury, based on the reaction around the league. So Andy Dalton is, is definitely a, a priority add at the quarterback position in any kind of league, one quarterback, super flex, whatever, because again, when you're, when you're an average quarterback, which I think Andy Dalton is almost the definition of an average quarterback, you're only as good as the weapons around you. And the three receivers plus Dalton Schultz and Zeke Elliott are going to um, buoy the, the fantasy value of Andy Dalton and probably make him like a top 15 fantasy quarterback. It sucks for people who own CeeDee Lamb and Amari Cooper and, and Michael Gallup and stuff because they probably take a slight hit without uh, Dak Prescott in the lineup. But I still think this offense is going to be one of the better ones in the league and from a passing perspective. Zeke Elliott obviously gets on the on track on the ground in this game. He had 19 carries, 91 yards, two touchdowns on the ground, as well as uh, um, a reception for 14 yards. So, I mean, if anyone was worried about Zeke Elliott, I wasn't, um, then you shouldn't be because he got back on track on the ground in this game, even though he's missing a pretty solid portion of his offensive line and will be going forward. Yeah. Yeah, uh, definitely. Um, I think this, <laughs> this may be your only chance to get a guy like CeeDee Lamb. Um, hope, hope maybe there's a touch bit of panic in, in someone which it could be justified uh but this this seriously may be your only chance to grab a guy like that uh if you it's want a stud, man he's gonna win offensive rookie of the year yeah he's he's pretty he's he's pretty much yeah he's, he's pretty good <laughs> uh definitely will say that um yeah you, you mentioned zeke getting on that that was important i think you had to against the giants i mean yeah you had to um on their end if you can sell Anyone right now on the Giants team, please do so. This is your chance. This is your chance, period. Yeah. If you 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 know because you haven't been able to sell in the past, what, three weeks, four weeks, you haven't been able to move them at all, you got to do it now. This is your chance if you want to. Even if it's selling a little lower than, than you preferably like, you're going to want to do it. Um, guys like Evan Ingram and, and Slayton, I mean, this it's, it's unfortunate, but it may be your last chance to get them off your team and, and get to uh, – Get in a situation that's going to be a lot better for you. Yeah, I think Slayton is definitely the biggest sell high here. Um, yeah. I like Slayton. I think he's good, but he is a very boomer bust player. Like you almost never know when to start him. And I'm pretty sure I told a lot of people to start him in this game because he was going up against the Dallas secondary. Um, and that's not bad from a streaming receiver because he is kind of like a, a wide receiver three flex play week over week, but he has disappointed in good matchups as well. So if you are able to sell Darius Slayton for a guy like T Higgins, for example, I would do it in a heartbeat. Um, another big story out of this game is the fact that Amari Cooper was like MIA for like the first two, two to three quarters of this game. I don't know what the hell was happening there, but, um, th this dude was leading the league in targets and, and literally just disappeared. So I have no idea what the hell was, the story was there. Yeah. Um, that, I mean, it could just be Amari Cooper being Amari Cooper. James Bradbury surprise is a hard matchup. I've been saying it all week. Like he's a great corner and he's clamped better receivers than Amari Cooper so far this season. So, I mean, maybe that's all it was. Maybe it was just Bradbury locking him down, but this proves that Amari Cooper is exactly who Amari Cooper is. He's either going to be uh, inconsistent due to play or injury or whatever. Like he's never going to be a guy that you set it and forget it. You never worry about him because th that's just not who Amari Cooper is. He's not DeAndre Hopkins. He's not Michael Thomas. He's not um, Devonte Adams. Like th these guys that are just, you'd never worry about them leaving early with injury even like, cause Namari Cooper just seems to be inconsistent no matter where he is. Yeah. Uh, and, and we talked about the Dallas situation with a new quarterback. Um, how about a team that needs to draft a new quarterback? This isn't good for the Giants. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Daniel Jones, man, he like is looking Dwayne Haskins. -y. Yeah. That draft looks bad. Now it looks like Kyler Murray and then everyone else. And even then it's, yeah, no, there's no one, there's no one else good from that class. I mean, I, let's I really let's give let's give Horsecock a chance here. See what, what he can uh, do when true. he comes back. We, we can talk about Drew Locker if we want to. His situation's really good, so that may help him. But yeah, no, it, it uh, <laughs> Daniel Jones and Dwayne Haskins are gonna be on the on the outs quick. And I think with how good this quarterback class is coming up, um, I think it'd it's be hard to pass, man, because the Giants are gonna be in a, like a top five, top three maybe first pick. If you have the first pick overall, you cannot pass Trevor Lawrence. You can't. Yeah. And if you like have the Daniel second, Jones is not shown enough to pass Trevor Lawrence. 
And, and if you have the second, you definitely don't have room to bounce off a guy like Fields or yeah, or, no, and like I even Lance to too, man. Say it, Trey Lance, man. Trey Lance has been. Uh, the, the apple of scouts eye for years like since he had like since uh last year when he had like the 36 touchdown season or whatever like i i think i consider moving off of daniel jones for someone like him as well like i don't know yeah. unless you absolutely are dead set on like hey well let's get penny sewell for for daniel jones we'll move andrew thomas to right tackle or whatever then we have uh two bookend tackles going forward like is that really appealing or is it appealing to add the the potentially the best franchise quarterback prospect to ever come out of school yeah and and there's there's more than that i mean if we compare that draft class i think you throw kyler murray maybe after trevor lawrence but even then i'm like questioning it like there's legit like six guys that could start like week one and be genuinely good quarterbacks for a team and if you're not comfortable with your quarterback situation this is the year you have to jump you gotta jump because there's a lot of really great options that you could go to and, and feel fairly comfortable with um, Daniel Jones just doesn't look real. I mean, it, it's unfortunate. We gave him a shot. He looked kind of decent at the end of last year, but he's just not good. Like he's just not, he's not going to win you, uh, win you games consistently. Sorry. Sorry, Giants fans. I know the six picks tough and it's just a tough situation for you, but you just got to chalk it up as a loss and move on. Yeah, and to be fair, it is worth taking those shots because the quarterback position is the most important in all of sports. And if if had had Daniel Jones been that guy and came out and been a stud, then we'd all look like idiots because everyone roasted the Giants for that pick. Every single person was like, Daniel Jones should not be going at pick six. And had that ha- had he been like a revelation of a quarterback, like that guy that we saw in Tampa Bay his rookie year, where he like just absolutely carried the team then we'd be, oh, we'd all look like idiots, but it doesn't look like Daniel Jones is bulletproof. He did look very good in his rookie season. I will admit he, he actually looked pretty good, but uh, this season so far, he has looked like an absolute travesty train wreck. So in a more, um, in a more recent example, real quick, uh, if he had looked like Justin Herbert and what Justin Herbert's looked like, then, yeah. you know, with all the doubt that we gave Herbert is what we gave Daniel Jones, but Herbert showed up. So yeah, that, that'll be, you know, I'll let you wrap it up. Yep. So as I mentioned, if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the button that looks like this comment, any of your thoughts down below, um, any of your, this is black Monday. So if you had a bad beat in fantasy football, we let us know about it. Misery loves company. I had a couple bad beats. So, um, I will be free to share my misery with you guys. Um, subscribe to the channel. If you're new, as I mentioned, uh, hit the icon that looks like a bell. If you want to be notified anytime your uh you we go live or we post a new video make sure you're checking out everything tyler's doing uh the sporter dot site uh that's that's his kind of stuff there and check out uh, the twitter uh for the sporter as well as his twitter will be on the screen right now um thanks for listening guys uh enjoy your monday